Whatever, we're live, we're here. All right. Hi, two viewers. Hi. 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 Uh, sorry, there's like whatever, a thing with my USB port, and the mic wasn't working, so we had a troubleshoot like we do literally every time. There's every. Technical difficulties are so bad, but we didn't. Pulled it out. Yeah. Last week, we weren't able. Yeah. Cut down on the mental energy you spend picking out your clothes. Just the same thing every time. It's like it's a uniform now. Yeah, it's like Daria. You know Daria, where she like opens her closet and it's the same. It's all the yuck. Yeah. You gotta get some yuck yucks, dude. I don't know what that means, but okay. Mm -hmm. I'll send it to you. It's cool. If you if you want some yuck yucks, hit us up in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear about it. What what style do you have? Um. Okay, so we like to start out with what's new with you. We'll just do that really fast, and then we'll start interviewing Alex because he's been patiently waiting even though he did not have a cable, despite being an IT guy. <laughs> we really need the IT support tonight. We'll let it slide, though. Let me drop the ball. Alas. Um, okay, what's new? Which is, if you don't know about uh, Baba Yaga or Baba Yaga, you should Google it. <laughs> but she's like an ancient Slavic witch that is what Hansel and Gretel and Cinderella is based on. And in 2018, we made like a giant witch house with chicken legs, and it lives out in the desert. So we went there and worked on it. And I also brought working on finishing up my tree sculpture for Tahoe. So it's just this like crazy art week, which is cool. Oh, someone's talking to us. Hi. Passionate about rock as a teenager. Yeah, absolutely. Be passionate about rock as a teenager. Hi. I just got promoted at the generator. So oh. I was a contractor before and I worked here part time, but now I am a full time director. I say. Now I'm a director. I was a man manager, like a contract manager. Now I'm a staff director. More of it and also doing more of the adult educational programming as well. So if you want to teach a workshop here, hit me up. But email me. Don't hit me up in the chat. Email education at renogenerator.com. Yes, yeah, or workshops. I just posted about our summer camps in uh, Reno, South Reno Moms Group, and they were like, what about 15 to 18 year olds? And I was like, do they go to summer camp? Uh, yeah, we gotta no get idea. rid of them. Get out of the But house. they can just do whatever. They're like allowed to be free by them, aren't they? You could just be like, go get a job. You're 16. I don't know. You better get to work. I mean, that's how we will be, but some other people want to like enrich their children. No, yeah. We do need to do more teen programs because people do keep asking for that. So, yeah. teen programs. You want to teach a Coming teen program? Coming soon. Coming soon, yes. You want to teach a teen program? <laughs> that sounds scary. Do you like teens? Uh, I did like teach uh, resin casting today to middle school students because I'm a glutton for punishment. How'd that go? It went well. Um, it was good. It was a little bit... Yeah, why It was a little hairy, but it was good. We should have they that class. It. Yeah, I want to do it. I'm now, I'm, I mean, now I'm like... Yeah, Rianne, we're going to have that class. What's up? Yeah. Let's do it. Resin casting for teens. Boom. Put it on the Go schedule. On the calendar. Education director. <laughs> <laughs> there is a tie-dye found objects class coming up, and what I said, too, is like, literally anybody can take any class, so if Yeah, you... yeah. Teens are always welcome in the adult yeah, classes, yeah. pretty much. Like, with the ones where there's safety concerns, I would you know, you should inquire and we can check in with the instructor, but overwhelmingly, like, teens, especially late teens, like, absolutely, they're welcome. Yeah. If you trust him, we trust him. Bring him on down. Oh, I don't think it <laughs> Send them down. Send us your teens. Hi, Claire. Mm -hmm. Where's my rhubarb pie? Where's it at? <laughs> Uh, okay, well, let's get into it because we're already running late. Uh, welcome, Alex. Can Thank you. Please you. introduce yourself? Um, Alex Alcantar. Um, it's always nice. You're like me. It's like AA, JJ. Yeah. Just nicer that way. Yeah, it's alphabetically, it's worked out real well for me. Yeah, you know? I bet. Always head of the line there. A lot of opportunities. A lot of opportunities. <laughs> for being at the top yeah. of the alphabet, you know? Maybe, I feel like I should have thought more about that when I named my children. Messed it up. Elliot's yeah. pretty early. See, Elliot's up there. C's. They're yeah. early. That's fine. That's They're fine. early in the alphabet. Yeah. yeah. I went with M, so. He's screwed. At least it's not Xander. At least it's not. <laughs> yeah, that'd be real bad. Zoro. You know, Zoro. Oh, Zoro. You know, my brother is Zachary. Oh, yeah. So, no. yeah. I mean, Zach is such a classic. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know one. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, Zach's in our day. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? Why are you here? Yeah, so, you um, I'm here uh, because we're going to be starting a new uh, concert series at the Generator. And it's going to be really cool, hopefully. Um, we're looking to do a monthly uh, matinee show series. So um, matinee shows traditionally... Um, they've got a long history with, like, punk and, you know, the whole DIY thing. Um, a lot of clubs back in the day, they wouldn't let punks play at night when... Um, I don't even know this. I'm getting educated Yeah, right they, uh, when they would uh, have bands come and perform for, like, an audience. You know, they wanted uh, bands with a bigger draw and stuff, but uh, they still wanted to make money off of the burgeoning punk scene. So they'd uh, let them play earlier. So, um... It works out for us because, uh, you know, doing a show from 2 to 6 on a Sunday, it opens it up a lot more for people to be able to come Mm -hmm. and hang out. Um, It's easier for the younger folk um, to come. Their parents can drop them off. And um, it's just a lot more accessible, especially, um, you know, obviously we're going into summer, but once uh, school starts back up again, you know, parents aren't going to want their kids to stay out late. Um, Yeah. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for people to come down and kind of get involved. Um, you know, and uh, we wanted to be, like, the name suggests, so we're calling it Neutral Ground. Yeah, Neutral Ground. Um, and uh, that's, uh, it's really important. We want it to be, like, a neutral space for people to kind of come down and enjoy themselves. If they haven't been involved in a local music scene before, they have the opportunity to come down. And it's... Uh, a lot less intimidating than maybe, uh, yeah. you know, a basement would be. I remember, uh, you know, trying to go to basement shows when I was a lot younger, and it's it's hard making those first steps, you know? But, yeah, uh, even going, you know, like, yeah, going to the bar, not an option. Basement yeah. shows, house shows, you're like, ooh, I don't know, I saw a flyer, but yeah, you know, okay. It's, it's still somebody's it's house, you know? Yeah. Like, it's weird, it's hard to go to somebody's house oh, yeah. like uninvited. Over a little yeah, bit. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, and Holland's, like, pretty cool, so you can also be like, I don't know if I'm cool enough to go to Holland. Yeah, Holland's very cool, and, um, you know, Holland does a lot of great things, and it's, uh, but they're only one entity, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's important to have more spaces for kids to play, as well as, um, allow maybe some older bands that are, you know, playing kind of more of the bars and stuff that want to play some all-ages shows or want to, you know mentor some younger bands it's a lot easier to do it you know in this sort of environment um that has kind of a blank slate for it you know there's not so much of a um like a i don't want to say like a closed scene but uh like an established an established scene scene. there you go yeah so um and i feel like playing the bars can get really old because you're playing like the same four bars which is chill or whatever but it's the same scene and it's late night, and yeah. yeah, it's just the vibe is really different. Exactly, like a daytime vibe on a weekend. That's so. That's like so chill. It's gonna be really. Yeah. Like, it's just gonna be like everyone can hang out. Yeah. You know what? Maybe if we can't find a food truck, sorry, this is just making me think. <laughs> maybe we should just like get a grill and we should just grill some food. Like I'm just thinking about the Sunday chill vibes. Down yeah, you're the grill that. master. Yeah, I will. I will grill. Yeah, if we don't oh, yeah. get a food truck. I wish Max could come and grill too. Cause he's awesome. I know he master. is. Yeah, he's a. He's a learning, he's a grill master Padawan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, the way of the grill. Yeah. 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 That's real cute. So Alex is a dad and a musician and an IT guy and a <laughs> beekeeper. Yeah. Fun oh, facts. Oh, yeah, I'll actually beekeeper. be getting uh, more bees on Sunday right before. Right before the program. You yeah. just take them with you. Yeah, they come like, with me. Yeah. It's part of my you act, know, my shtick, is I bring yeah. the bees. Are you there's be not so many. I could, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just uh, there's not a lot of bears here, so it's probably safer for my bees. Yeah, yeah. Here with yeah. Me Can you just? Um, I know it's like a little off topic, but it's cool that you're also like into the apiary life. Yeah. Can you tell everybody about your your bee debacle? Is it too <laughs> emotional? No, I think uh, you yeah. know we've gotten through it. I yeah. think that it's with time and you know healing. So hard. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple uh, beehives. It's a. It was my first year last year doing um, no. beekeeping, and we live in Washoe Valley, uh, right next to Davis Creek. Um, the so entire 
summer, uh, the Bears had pretty much left the apiary alone. Um, everything was fine, but it was such a, a late, late fall last year. Um, winter didn't really come till like late December. So, uh, we just kind of pushed it too hard. And I thought, um, I thought things were, were okay. I thought the bears were hibernating, but the bears were not hibernating. And yeah, one day Max and I left, we were gone. I was going to take him to school and then go to work. And the whole thing was destroyed. And it was really sad nice. because, uh, bees are such a, they're such a cool insect, you know, and it's really yeah. hard to see because you could see, um, you know, not to get too like brutal about it, but you could see where they were trying to keep each other warm. So there was just like clumps of bees around mm. and we tried to save as many as possible, but it just, oh, cause they froze. Cause yeah. It was, it, was cold. it was cold. It was cold at night. Yeah, so. Cause I was thinking like, Oh, maybe they like left and they swarmed. Somewhere. Yeah. That would have been best case scenario, yeah, but it was too cold. To... So they just tried to mm. keep each other warm. And yeah, so this year, you know, we just, uh, with something like that, you just do a lessons learned. So now yeah. I built a, got a nice big electrified mat that I built. So should a bear come anywhere near my bees, it's going to space. Nice. You know, it's, He's a big bee daddy. Yeah. Stay away, bears. Stay away, bears. We love the bears, but, not you know, not when they're mess messing the with bees. my girls. No. Oh, so, get away from these bees. Yeah. Yeah, so it's unfortunate, especially because it takes like a year to get honey from oh, hives. Man. So, you know, they've got to, they overwinter, like once they hit the spring early, you know, that's when they make a lot of the honey you can harvest um, later on in the season. But uh, we just didn't get that this year. So we're just starting from scratch and it's, it's okay, you know, yeah. and we'll be back and better than ever. Yeah. Uh, I need to plug in my computer, guys. Beekeeping is hard. Mm -hmm. Be right back. Oh, that's yeah, what you're saying. It is I've hard. known a few beekeepers, and I know, like, I thought you were going to say you experienced, like, a hive collapse. No. I know that yeah. that's such a thing. No, and actually, I thought one of, the, one of the hives I really thought was going to collapse because mm -hmm. um, it just didn't do anything. Like, mm -hmm. they were, they didn't grow, the population didn't grow, um, mm -hmm. they weren't really uh, collecting a lot of nectar, making a lot of honey for the winter, they were mm -hmm. just very chill, but the... Every time we looked, the queen was always healthy. Mm. Like, the while the population hadn't grown, it hadn't gotten smaller. Mm. Like, it was just like, you know, they were just yeah. a little too chill. Um, so, yeah, they made it through, you know, the summer. It's just it was that bear. Huh. Or bears. Could have been multiple bears. We don't yeah, know. sure. Yeah, I used to, when I, when I used to live in Portland, I, um, I do a lot of electronics work. Mm. And I had a friend who was also really into electronics stuff. And he invited me to be on this project team and so we because he was creating this uh a module that would basically count that it was like an arduino control like a microcontroller like a small computer that would uh track the bee movement like it would have just like pretty simple just a counter yeah. basically but then we'd be able to you know send data you know to, to your computer or whatever and like you could track the bee activity to right. kind of wow. some clues that's and really cool of, and we were like we were, it, it was, uh, he was approached by a reality show about oh, wow. like, being on this, like, so we got through, like, two rounds <laughs> of whatever for it, but yeah. obviously we didn't get picked, so this would be a story about how I was on a reality right, show, right. but I was not, but, um, yeah, I don't know, that was kind of cool, yeah. <laughs> I learned a lot, but I learned a lot about bees in that process, yeah, there's a lot amazing. of interesting things to know about bees. So you get your bees on Sunday? Yeah, so, but it's early, early Sunday, so. How many bees? What's uh, we're doing two colonies, so um, it'll be a lot, uh, probably uh, three frames each colony, so okay. um, you know, enough to get started. They just moved. deliver it to you, yeah. Uh, I'm mentored by a, a lady that I actually work with, she's a really big beekeeper, and um, she splits a bunch of hives like kind of earlier on in the season and then make sure they um you know, make a queen because bees choose what the larva turns into, which is really cool. So we mm -hmm. need Dang, the workers insects, to, yeah. it's crazy. so crazy. Yeah. So they choose like what it turns into. So they need to make a queen for each one. And she, um, just made sure that, uh, each colony has a queen. So we'll be, we'll be good to go. Hit the ground running. Major. 
Um, yeah, I mean, you can be, buy bees off the internet, which is interesting. That's I mean, nuts. you can do, uh, um, you know, and they're healthy and they're, it's a safe, like, totally cool way to do it. But this you way, I get like local. Ship it to you? you can buy yeah. a lot of living things on the internet. Yeah, I really ship can. To you. I have, yeah. I, had a sh- I had a snake mailed to me once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. You can do that. You can do that, guys. I've had a lizard mailed to me. Yeah. Um, all kinds of bugs, cockroaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I really want beetles, but they're not legal. Well, the kind of beetles I want aren't legal. Yeah, beetles. you already have beetles. I want different yeah. beetles. I want the ones you never have too legal. many beetles. Mm-hmm. We have weird like import export laws. Well, not export. I don't know if we care about export, mm-hmm. but yeah, we have very restrictive laws in this country with importing beetles. Beetles, good to know, fam. Yeah. Fam. Um, in case you want okay, to cool. So beetles. people come to so neutral ground is the first one this Sunday from yeah. two to six. And then when you when you get there, you can ask Alex how the bees went. Yeah, we'll just talk bees the whole time. We don't even need to play music, really. Like, if you guys just want to talk bees, then yeah. we can do that, just like, too. Uh, like, with the microphone, just like, and you're just take like... Take a Sharpie and, like, just write bee chat or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think people would be into The flyers, right? listen. It's a yeah. punk rock bee chat, baby. Um, so we couldn't get a fourth band, so you guys get to just listen to me talk about bees for a half hour. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a nerd band. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, goes yeah. right into that. I've been wanting to do that forever. So. <laughs> There's actually a guy who hit me up on the punk rock flea market Instagram because he wants to start a punk rock chess club. So I just <gasps> reposted it. Cute. And a bunch of people were like, heck yeah. So I think it's going to happen. We're, That's amazing. Yeah. I, really I want was that like, to come to neutral ground yeah. and start your chess club. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Marilyn is so into chess. I want to hear Nice. So come on Sunday and there'll be live music and maybe chess. chess. Maybe chess. Homies. I like that, you know, anything can be punk, right? That's yeah. the cool thing. Well, and that's, I think that was kind of when we were initially talking about it, too. I think that's uh, kind of the environment we wanted to foster, you know? It's like, yeah, you got a chess thing you want to do? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, come down and hang out, you know? Do it's, Sunday afternoon punk chess. God, yeah. that sounds with live wonderful. Music. With yeah. live music, and you're hanging out with some friends. and Such a good antidote you know? to just looking at your phone, which is yeah. the thing I'm usually For real. doing. For real. Uh, tell us about the bands for this first neutral ground. Yeah, so uh, we've got uh, Pussy Valor, who um, I just played a show with, I think, last month. Um, they're absolutely amazing. Um, do they play the Family Soup Mutual I was just going to say. Yeah, yeah they, they do. Yes, yes, they they do. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and they, uh, I think, and I could be wrong, but I think that how they started was they actually started as a uh, Cramps tribute band for mm-hmm. the Holland Project when they do their annual Halloween show where oh, the bands yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, dress cool. up and do a set. Um, but they did it so well. Everybody's like, you guys should just be yeah. a band. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely like in the style of the cramps uh, and they're amazing. Like they're literally one of my favorite bands in Reno right now. Um, mm-hmm. It's a I big, just, that's a big compliment. I know, yeah. It's not not like I you know pick and choose. I just if I see Pussy Valor playing, I'm gonna really really make the effort to. Yes. It's really they're really fun. Um, and then uh, we have a folk punk band called Unexplainable Cattle Mutilations, which wow. is an amazing band I name. That. I love folk punk. So um, much. me too. Yeah, so I think it's a couple uh, younger folk. Um, I think they're just kind of getting going too. So, um, again, it's really exciting and I want to, you know, stress that as we develop this series, um, if you have bands or your friends have bands or your kids yeah. have a band, like just let them come and play. Um, you yeah. know, there will always be a spot for them. I don't, you know, if they have three songs, but they're ready to try playing it in front of people, they can, they're more than welcome to come try it out. Um, yeah. I think that's really going to be part of the vibe too is this is going to be kind of an experimental space right so absolutely yeah you can just come and play to a bunch of people just hanging out and not be afraid or whatever like we're gonna love you no matter what you yeah do. you can literally just like have feedback and knock over the microphone and play like two chords and we'd be like all right good, yeah good try everybody you know like absolutely super yeah super open. exactly yeah. I, I thrive on enthusiasm like i just like live on it so i will be enthusiastic about whatever you're doing, even if it's just kicking over a microphone and screaming for a while, like, great, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Sounds fun as hell. Yeah, yeah, right? And then um, <laughs> the uh, third band that we have playing, they're called In The Works. They are 
uh, originally from Tahoe, but now they're in Reno. Um, and again, they seem uh, much younger. I believe they play at the All Ages. Um, Flea Show. Flea Show. Probably. Yeah. I don't. There were so many. There were so many events. There were so many events. But when I was, you know, this first lineup was uh, really hard to get together because it's Memorial Day weekend. So literally the entire scene in Reno is going camping, I think. Yeah. Probably and then, not together, but... And it's Bull Rito up in Tahoe on Saturday. So if you are looking for something cool to do on Saturday night, you can go up to South Lake Tahoe and go to Bull Rito, which is right. going to be like a skate jam with live music at my friend's skate house. So that'll be, that'll be dope. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Bull Rito's always a good time. Yeah. So. I've never been there. I know. Yeah. Scheduling conflicts. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So that's uh, that'll be our lineup um, this first go around, and then um, as we develop the series, it'll be a monthly thing. Um, and we've got a ton of interest, like a lot of uh, bands that I reached out to. While they couldn't do it this specific date, they're very, very interested in doing it down the road. So you know, we'll have established bands, bands that aren't so established, and um, yeah just kind of see where we can go from there. I'm really excited about kind of seeing how to redevelop it. And, you know, this is the first time I've ever done something like this. So it's definitely a learning experience already. Um, yeah, I feel like we're putting on our big kid pants and throwing a monthly, you know, that's a commitment to like throw a series, but yeah. I feel, I feel really good about it. I'm like really stoked and I'm, I'm glad it's something you wanted to do. And it's something I was already thinking about. I real it's like real kismet, you know, Yeah. it's going to be good. And then everybody loves the flea. So it's like a little bit of the flea once a month, every last Sunday. And we're talking, uh, I just talked with Ascension yesterday and they're going to be bringing up box and rails and stuff. Not this time, but, um, going forward. And they're going to do spray paint walls, so nice. there'll also be like a skateboarding element and a spray painting element. And Terrence and his crew will be like showing can control and like how you do murals. So there'll be like lots of things to do as well as like listen to live music and eat food and, and yeah. stuff. So that's going to be dope. And Terrence um, showed both of our very small boys how to spray paint and it was super yeah. cute. So you can totally bring your yeah. super little kids. And he was talking about bringing bucket paint too. Nice. So that like if there's really little kids, they could just bucket paint. Um, and we'll just make a bunch of art. Nice. So yeah. that'll be rad. Um, speaking of art, I also want to put out there too. Um, I wanted to um, put out a call for artists for flyers and stuff too. Like every month, um, my dream would be to have a, a different artist do a flyer every month. Um, nice. So, you know, if you got somebody that wants to take a stab at putting a flyer together, just have them reach out and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Ascension already said that they are down to do a flyer too, because they're a collective, so they have a bunch of different artists, and they were stoked about that. Perfect. And Nate um, is a new crew member here at The Generator, and, and this was his first real flyer. So. Yeah. And then he was like so stoked to just like see it. He's like, here's my art. It's a flyer. Now, yeah, you know? exactly. It's a, And it's such a, you know, flyer, it's just another, it's such a visceral part of like the DIY show experience. Yeah. You know, like it's just... There's something so cool, uh, you know, for a younger band or any band really to see like your name on a flyer. It's cool mm -hmm. for an artist to see their art on a flyer, and it's something you can kind of hold and carry on and like save, you know. Yeah, save forever. It used to be ticket stubs, right? We used to save like yeah. all our ticket stubs for things, but there's it's all digital now. You can't save your ticket stubs yeah. anymore, but you can save the little save flyers. Save it in your Apple Wallet. Right there, you go. <laughs> yeah, you can turn it into an NFT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it rabbit hole um yeah and also if you want to do something like punk chest or like the spray paint walls or whatever you know you want to do like button making or tie-dye or whatever you know like any element of diy culture that you want to bring to neutral ground like we're so open to it it's going to be every last sunday you can just hit us up and be like i want to make you know literally whatever and we'll be like yeah yeah dude like let's figure it out um and it's five dollars suggested donation, which is going to go back to the bands. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe also, you know, if a lot of people turn up, and we could take some of that money too and put it towards like, you know, a chessboard or, so, you know, like tie dye supplies or like whatever you guys want to do, like spray paint for the spray walls. So it's kind of going to be this like really DIY volunteer community funded experience, and it's really up to you guys. Like whatever you want to see at it, it's going to be a venue for for everybody. Yeah. 
yeah, really excited to see uh, where it goes, you know? Um, yeah. Because, yeah, I think uh, it's funny because we do talk about, like, the punk rock flea market. It's such a, it's such an iconic event now um, that happens every year. It's cool to kind of take this spirit of that and that kind of goodwill and the good vibes um, and kind of put it forward. I think uh, because it is such a welcome and inviting space, not to say that other spaces aren't, like, it's not a... Um, anything like that. I just think that the the nature of the beast and the space really lends itself to people like trying something out. I mean, even me, right? Like I uh, don't think I really would have uh, pursued this had we not had such a good kind of canvas to put it on. So I think it's um, it's really exciting. And yeah, like now that I didn't realize the bump rock chest thing was like like that's just such a cool thing to me. Like I. That that's like see, magically like, happening. Yeah, yeah, I want to see like more weird stuff like that. That's so much fun. Yes, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, yeah, we could do like, I don't even know, Ma- like punk rock sewing punk. and you like oh make a gosh. pillow and then you like scream into the pillow. Just, Just like, like a collective release. You know, we could do punk a, rock a lot crochet of weird stuff. With yeah. like little well, hardcore stitch, doilies. Stitching bitches, for sure. Oh, yeah. do, who wants to do a stitching bitch? Yeah. Um, Let's do it. No, you're really like the success story of the fleet or like, a, a magic thing of the flea because like we met because you played the flea the first mm-hmm. year and you were a volunteer yeah and it was just like oh this person's down like we just connect you know with mm-hmm. another punk rock parent that's gonna like volunteer yeah. and show up and make music and then we've just been friends ever since yeah and now exactly. it's, a... it's the fifth year of the flea all this time of like this relationship and you've done the car smash every year <laughs> yeah and now we're doing a monthly yeah i like, think it's really so exciting nice. yeah yeah. yeah, this happened yeah, really, really cool. fast. It was like people were like, oh, we should be doing things more often. And then you guys were like, cool, let's do this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, because yes. Alex had already asked me before the week this nice. year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I do. Yeah. So, and I was like, yes. Right into this. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got uh, caught up in the flea. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, so it's. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Really and now great. Alex plays bass for Kanawa. Kanawa, yeah. Kanawa? Kanawa. Kanawa, yeah. I guess. Uh, it's funny because uh, I think the band, like we, Kanawa is the band, but the county that the band is named after, I'm pretty sure, and man, if Tony's watching this, he's going to yell at me, but uh, I think it's pronounced like Kanal. I think they say it like. Like it's not. There's no. Yeah, they should say Kanal. Because I, and I work with a guy who is also from that area of West Virginia, and he's, like, when I told him I was in the I band, didn't even know that's like, what it was named after, West yeah. Virginia? Yeah, Kanawha County, or Kanawha County like in, uh, or like in uh, Why? West Virginia. Why? Uh, so that's where Tony, the guitar player, is from. Um, and it was just kind of his vision for the project, I think, before he even kind of assembled all the pieces. Um, he just, like, had the name, like, and it lends itself real well to the music, you know, because it's mm-hmm. uh kind of slow and heavy but also yeah. um there's like a kind of more of a blues i don't know it's real yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. there's just a lot of uh yeah i don't know it just it feels right you know yeah <laughs> it's name. like yeah it's like dark bluesy yeah yeah like heavy yeah yeah okay i see it i get it yeah. i get it all right yeah so we're uh we're working on um getting ready to start recording um nice What's so, your next show? Do you have a show coming up? We have the next uh, show in our region, I believe, is the beginning of August. I think August 6th. Um, mm. Maybe a little, maybe August 9th. Somewhere in there. Um, not till August, though, because we're... Sixth, uh, upside down. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's one of those. <laughs> Do you know <laughs> um, where it's at? Yeah, it's going to be at uh, the Auto Tourist, uh, the nice. seller stage. Yeah. It's an amazing lineup. Uh, Drag Me Under... Is it on the weekend? And uh, it's a Friday night. Then it's so. Nice. Okay, perfect. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have so. a camp scheduled that week. Oh, okay. Just the second nice. to six. Yeah. I thought maybe this was like a superpower you had that I didn't know about. It's my I was, brain yeah, I trip. was really impressed. I was like, wow. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I just um, figured that out because I yeah. did the math. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, so Drag Me Under's playing, they're, uh, they're amazing, and then uh, Weight of the Tide, it's their show, so um, they haven't played a show in a while, I feel like, so it's really cool to see them come out of... Uh, nice. Same kind of vibe. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, like... it's going to be a very heavy show. Yeah. It's, uh, 
it's gonna be really cool. Um, we're all really, really, really excited about it. Um, everybody in Canada, especially, is just like, this is unreal. Like, I can't believe we're playing this show. So. It's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. It's a cool way to feel. Sick. I should pull up. Maybe I could. I have some. Uh, you guys played before you were in that band, but yeah. they played last year when we did the virtual plea. Yeah. So I have some like dope videos of it. So. Oh, nice. We can yeah. That up to you. Yeah, it's yeah, used really that uh, that video when I first joined the band. I was like trying to when I was learning the parts. So like, oh, nice! You played when it. Watched nice. the video and was uh, I love that. trying to figure stuff out. And, yeah. Cool. Sick. Um. Well, sweet. I'm gonna roll into. I want to talk about all these maker grants. Um. But everyone should come out this Sunday, and come to the first neutral ground show. We're really stoked about it. Yeah. Anything else we need to tell the people? No, just uh, I really, really hope uh, anybody who can um, make it, you know, uh, it'll be from two to six, so just right in that sweet spot of the afternoon. Um, yeah. The bands are all really good. It's uh, you can do, you can't do much worse for five dollars. It's gonna be great. So. Yeah, and like all ages, bring your kids. Yeah. Uh, just like drop off your teens and tell them to not bother you for a while, whatever yeah, you need to do. Go, go run errands. Yeah, and we we are looking for a food truck, still like struggling to find that. So if you know of one or you are one and you want to come, uh, hit us up. You can just message RPRFM Reno Punk Flea on Instagram or you know hit us up in the chat, whatever whatever works for you guys. But that'd be cool. Otherwise, I think we're just gonna grill it. Yeah. I don't know. If you're down, I'm you're down so right. down. Yeah. Nice. I was trying. To, Scott was telling Scott from Machine Gun Vendetta was telling right. me how he used to um, just do crock pot dollar tacos at this like venue in Oakland. Oh, that's cool. He's a chef, and I was like, "Are you saying you're gonna do that?" Or that's uh, yeah, like, smart. Yeah. Just start it. Like, like he just volunteers just keep it on it. But he can't because he's the he's doing all the videoing and photography. Oh, Because yeah. he's part of Charge Start, and so he's like, "I can't do both things." Come on, man. He could prep it, and someone else could man it. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll just grill it up. I feel yeah, like Memorial up sounds great. Memorial Day weekend. Memorial that sounds like, super fun. You know, out, even yeah, if we just yeah, see yeah. a bunch of like Memorial Day weekend, yeah, we just get yes, the hot yeah. dogs and we get some veggie hot yeah, dogs. dogs. We, just, we just put a jar out and it's like throw whatever money in there, yeah. and they'll just go back to the kitty. Yeah. I'm down. I'm not. I'm not great. I yeah. It's, it's really hard to mess up hot dogs. You can. You think that, but don't <laughs> challenge us. I mean. Last time I went to Jersey for the summer, I was cooking burgers for literally all of my pet. Well, not all of them, but like we're a big, you know, yeah. German Eastern European family, and there was a lot of family there, and they put me in charge of the grill. I do not know why, and I was <laughs> like, I this is not a problem. It's not like whatever. It's a grill, and everything was going fine. The burgers were looking great, and I was like, I'm just gonna charm a little bit, like right at the end. And I closed the lid, and then the next time I opened it, everything was on fire. Oh, man, yeah. And I had burned, like, 30 burgers. Yeah. Oh, no. It was, like, the worst grill thing of my life. And all my cousins were just sitting there, like, uh. <laughs> I was like, I am a failure. Well, it's West Coast style. This is a West Coast burger. <laughs> yeah. It's like a hot you know, it's what This is how we do it on the West Coast. You know? purifying for your yeah. system. It's like a detox when you eat this yeah. burger. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a cool. California burger. Yeah, it's a detox. It's good. It was really Guys. Eat it. Could fuck up your birth control. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that true? Charcoal. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, you really learn a lot on this show. <laughs> I'm, I'm a wealth. Yeah, the more you know, I feel Learned like that's bees. not. Bees. Learn about yeah. yeah. Charcoal. Charcoal and birth control. That's it. But like, how much? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But there's all kinds of weird stuff. Like I don't even take birth. I just know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Weird. Um, cool. Thanks for being on. Yeah, thank you for um, having me. I'm gonna go into the. I'm gonna talk about these maker grants because yeah, we. Maker grants. You can hang out or you can leave. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was like, what's the? I know. If there's no getting past it, you either One have to like awkwardly shuffle off. I'm gonna do the awkward shuffle. Yeah, go, thing. That's go. gonna be really cool. Yeah. yeah. Do I'm do not gonna leave yet. I just want to do the shuffle. All right. Well, thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah, you're awesome. I'm so excited. Real master, a priori. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, maybe I should have stayed in the other Hi, viewers. How's it going? Uh, by the way, Alex isn't here today. The other Alex, our intern. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just up here in your face. Yeah. Hey. Now we're back to doing our own stunts here. Doing our own stunts. Okay, so 
I want to tell you guys about these grants. I'm just going to pull <laughs> up the, so you can see it. I should have stayed here. It's okay. Uh, you have to do it this way. Yeah, that's better. Then you can see my face. So, Maker Artist Grants. It's the first time we're ever doing this, and it's kind of a big deal. Ba -da -dum. You vote for your favorite project, and there's four projects. And the voting ends on Monday the 30th. Yeah, because the 31st is Tuesday? Yeah. So the 31st is the deadline for us to inform the artist. But so you have until Monday to vote, and there's four projects. It's, I'm making it sound more complicated than it is. It's actually really simple. You just go to our website, and you click Maker Artist Grant. And then you fill out this little thing over here on the right, and you just choose your favorite and you hit submit, and then you'll be part of the process in selecting who's going to get $2,000, a six-month residency here, and then a membership for three people. And the thing about the grants is that they're all community art, so they're really cool. And I want to just tell you about what you could vote for. The first one is Seraphim, and we actually had Nicole on the show before talking about this project. Um, Just a few episodes ago. Yeah, not that long ago. So I want to play a clip of Nicole talking about it so we can hear from her. Do you need anything? Don't look at me. <laughs> you look so weird. look so harsh. I guess I'm going to have us in the frame. Mm. about your fundraiser and your giant art project that you're doing right now. Yeah, we have a really exciting piece that is coming to fruition and it's called Seraphim. It's a mm -hmm. living public art piece. So it also has a whole experience around it because my amazing colleague, Keely, who has Around the Stage, she's also the theater director at Sage Ridge where I run, head up the art department and do all things art. So, what is Sage Ridge Elementary School? It is a three through twelve. Oh, nice. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. So, um, pandemic times, we have Sage sessions that are kind of like our fifth quarter, and it's the last two weeks of school. They give us the opportunity to come up with whatever classes we want to teach, like an elective for the kids, oh, cool. and we started the Art of Public Art, did some fun yes. things around campus. And the kids are really into it. And my old work, I always had all my students involved in all my big sculpture pieces, too. Cool. So I said... Because reveal, can... Nicole also makes Burning Man art. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can't for that? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so eventually, yes, it'll be making its way to the fly, too. This year. This year. Excellent. Nice. And all your kids are going to be a part of it. That's yes. So cool. Really And you're exciting. taking the kids all to Burning Man. <laughs> If, if I could, you know, I would. Get on the bus. Sign permission <laughs> Come on, parents. Let's go. <laughs> See you in 10 days. Just Nicole's got it on the show. Hey, it wouldn't be my first rodeo. <laughs> honestly, I think a Burning Man summer camp would sell out. We could we could make some serious cash off this Burning Man. Are we, are we sort of doing like a, a Burning, burning Man camp for children now? Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> Each child would get a furry bicycle. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so that's a little bit about Seraphim. So it's a, an impossible burning man kids camp. Apparently. And it looks like this. And the students have already been in the space working on it actually the last Yeah, they were hammering years. away on these feathers. Yeah, they're like really already cool. in here making these feathers. Um, it's going to be really rad. It's a nice interactive art piece with kids. And so that's one of the choices. You could make, you could vote for this uh, angel being sculpture. And then the other one is New Life, Navigating Upward, Loving Your Physical Human Existence, which is like Afrofuturism. Uh, it's pretty cool. So he wants to make a bunch of different art pieces based kind of around hip hop culture and then at the end throw like a big party um, kind of as a, like a celebration. And I'll pull up his PowerPoint really fast. Jay Wanza, he's really dope. He works with, um, he volunteers 
and works with Black Wall Street and a lot of the Washoe County School District from all ages, elementary school all the way up to high school. Um, and he runs a lot of really rad like hip hop workshops and some um, like special, special just like events, like kid friendly, all age, like hip hop events basically in art. So that's new life, Afrofuturism, and here's some of the art concepts. Yeah, they're sick. Love that. I follow the Afrofuturism hashtag on Instagram. Nice. And I learn about a lot of really cool art that. Oh yeah, that's a good hashtag. I mean, I follow a bunch of hashtags. But yeah, yeah. That's one that I. All of these. I love the stuff that comes through on there. Yeah. All of these projects are really, really sick. Dope. They're really a great idea, and they're gonna, you know, I wish we could fund each one of them. And it's good for you guys just to know about them because hopefully, yeah, they'll continue hopefully they'll no like what. all happen no matter what. I mean, Seraphim definitely. It seems like it. A few of them, I feel like they're gonna figure out a way to do it one way or the other, whether this is the way or not. Yeah, so. yeah, and I, you know, all of the contact information and all the stuff is on the, our website too. So if you can follow them on Instagram, you know, you can check out their website. And if any of these are things that call to you, um, yeah. you know, you can totally get involved and volunteer and support them no matter yeah, what. Okay, so we got two more. The next one I wanted to talk about is the Design Build Collective, which is Anella. We're gonna go to that first and then we'll come back to the Radical Writers. Anella de la Viaga, who's a, one of our resident artists in our uh, wood shop. Why can't I? Stewart. Stuart. You know how I had to remember that? My, my mnemonic device now is to think of Stuart yeah. from... Um, SNL? No, from Letterkenny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do love That's that. how I remember that that's what we call our people as steward. Nice. <laughs> I don't know um, that word just as not. Yeah, so it's like a woodworking and metalworking collective, which is really cool. It's focused on being able to work professionally within those um, disciplines, particularly if you are someone who falls outside the traditional like demographics of like being generally like a white male, yeah. I would say, that works in those or just, you know. So um, yeah. they're particularly focused on that because Anella is obviously a young female artist and, you know, she's gone through a lot you know getting herself to that point and wants to share a lot of what she's learned and also yeah. she just did this amazing uh what would you call it like a workshop like a long workshop um in traditional this traditional type of chair making like philosophy i wish she was going to be able to talk to us about it tonight but we're gonna have to have her on again to talk about it because it's very cool it's a very like low tool requirement so it's like a really great way to get people building like a really high quality furniture without having to like invest in a whole you know thousands yeah. of dollars of tooling it's this like old style simplistic I don't really know enough about it to describe it but um, I don't know I just think it's really cool so I wanted to talk about because yeah. she was gonna come talk about it tonight but then she got too busy so um, what she's doing with it is really cool yeah and it is such a thing you know like both of us have been working in maker spaces for like 12 years now, 15 years, like a really long time. And I still feel like going into the metal shop, I'll get, I'll feel like really intimidated, especially if there's like a lot of dudes in there, you know, or going into the wood shop, like, and that feeling really kind of happens a lot. Obviously, if you're a female or if you're, I think, a person of color or if you're a trans person or a queer person, you know, like just like not the straight white male that has been prominently in wood shop and metal shops, right? So this collective is really about like supporting those people and empowering them and giving them the tools and the and the support to like not feel like you're alone, like just fighting this uphill battle against the fucking patriarchy, like in the mm -hmm. in the maker space, you know? Yep. I was just thinking about that when I went to bring my piece to the powder coaters and like how afraid I get every time I have to go into a new shop space. Like Every single time, I'm like, oh, they're gonna like be like, oh, are you like the admin that's here to drop this off for like the master person, you know? Like, I mm -hmm. always feel like that. And yeah, I don't know how you get past it, but part of, partially by just having a cool You're surrounding yourself with community. people who are, yeah. who are, you know, 
You feel... Yeah. Um, but I have a little bit of vanilla that we... Because we interviewed her as well. So from back in the day. Episode 26 is episode 47 now, guys. So let's hear a little bit of vanilla talking about her work. Mr. Sawyer. <laughs> you got to get your motivation where you can. It's yes. true. So yeah, so that was great. Um, I learned a ton through them. Um, awesome. A lot of mostly by watching because again, he wouldn't let me, you know, I could sand in there. He let me use the sander. That was great. Um, <laughs> but for the most part, I was, I was an observe, observatory apprentice. Mm-hmm. And then he was surprised that I, I left after eight months because I needed to start playing with tools again. And, mm-hmm. um, and I would have stayed, I think, if I if I was able to do more hands-on stuff. But um, because he had so much to teach. and um, But luckily, we have the internet. And mm-hmm. I've, I'm largely self-taught in a lot of ways. Um, I'm a big proponent of self-teaching. <laughs> and as safe of a way as possible. I know you're also a crazy self-teacher. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, there's so, a lot you can learn on YouTube. There's a lot you can be able to learn on YouTube in any any facet. Literally anything. Yeah, you just have to kind of have the... That happens a lot on the show where people are like, ah, just YouTube it. Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> Watched the video. Googled it, got some hands it's on real. It's real, some feedback. And yeah. the feedback's always really fun in my field, too. Yeah. So. so what was your next step then? You left hit, left yeah. where he was in Santa Actually, Cruz, and then what was the next? Maker makerspace touring. I went to Grass Valley. For mm-hmm. That's my hometown. Um and in Grass Valley, I was I like um, sort of settled there for a little bit and tried it. What I it being woodworking there, mm-hmm. um, they have a makerspace there called the Curious Forge. Also a cool makerspace. Mm-hmm. Check it yeah. out if you live in that in the Gold Country. Mm-hmm. Um, really cool space. Really cool people. Good community. I could not get the work that I could get in Reno mm-hmm. in Tahoe area. Oh so, yeah, for sure. And Nevada, woohoo, is so friendly to small businesses. Mm-hmm. California, not so much. Sure. A lot of taxes. A lot of taxes. And yeah. in particular, like tiny little startups like me, it was really, really tricky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but it's awesome because then you came here. That brought you yeah. yeah. And now, yeah. And and now I, you're part of our community. And I'm a huge, uh, yeah, I like Reno a lot. Um, it's a great place to start up a small business. It's a great place to learn something new mm-hmm. and make it your... Agreed. Your hobby and or your career. I and the generator's the first place that you did woodworking here in Reno, or did you work uh, uh, some, somewhere else first? No woodworking in any other location except for the generator. I actually don't think I would have moved to Reno if the generator wasn't here, and I'm not just Us plugging too. the Same. Same. I'm not just plugging the generator. Um, yeah. It's hard not to, Huge though. appeal. Huge yeah. appeal. Um, I, was, I had heard the word Burning Man before, and... <laughs> was curious on how to get involved there, too. And that was a good little window into the Burning Man world. And get involved, you did? I did. I participated. Yeah, <laughs> she did a lot of work for the Head Maze Project, yes. which if you were watching Chris's video, you saw There's that for half about second. two seconds. <laughs> One second. Yeah. No, quarter of a second. Um, but, you know, if you follow Big Burning Man art, you probably know what it is. So. Right, yeah. True. And that was a crazy project. Yes. Yep. Um, <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, but yeah, so I don't know. The generator is a big appeal, big draw for me. It's awesome. And now you have a thriving woodworking business. Thriving. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, love it. I think it's perfect. It's small. Yeah. Um, I really like the people I work with. Yeah. Um, you have an apprentice now yourself. I do. Her name is Grace. She's great. <laughs> so she's, cool. She's awesome. She has a lot of uh, spunk. Mm-hmm. She like she. I recognize a lot of resourcefulness in her, and I think. That's awesome. That's what makes a good learner, somebody who who knows how to sort of problem solve on their own and mm-hmm. like look for the things that they need to improve on. And she's harder on herself than anyone else is. And, you know, I recognize that, too. <laughs> yeah. I um, know what that's like. So it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, she's my age, too. That's the other fun part. Mm-hmm. Is teaching somebody your age is also a little exciting and sometimes sure. dynamic. But yeah, that's really awesome. Good. She's great. If people want to see your work, where can they find it? Uh, online, although currently that website needs some labor. I'm a woodworker, not a web designer. But it looks good. It's it, good. There's it's a little cool buggy. stuff on some there. But if you want photos, there you go. Or Instagram at uh, De La Viaga Designs. Dot. Which we put in the... Yeah, yeah, it's in the ticker. It's in your ticker. Great, it's ticking. Currently, <laughs> she's ticking. 
Um, the ticker be taken. Ticker be taken. And then, yeah, those are the big places. All right, so that's a little bit of Anella talking about her woodworking and journey. her journey. And then the last option that you can vote for by Monday is Radical Adventure Riders and their mobile zine library. So they're so cool. Thank you. Yeah, I love them. You know we love zines at the generator. We love zines. Magazines. Mm-hmm. Ever, so many people are like, I'm here for the zines, <laughs> which is cool. But yeah, it's like magazine, but you just take the... The MAGA. You just get rid of the MAGA. Yeah, people don't even <laughs> take the MAGA out of the zine. Um, so they're like, yeah, they're DIY magazines, basically, and they want to make, like, a little... Um, the Radical Adventure Riders is, like, this whole non-binary... Uh, I don't... I forget how they self-describe, but they're, like, non-traditional bikers, right? Like, a biker collective, and um, they are really active here in Reno. It's really dope. They just like started last year and they do so much stuff mm-hmm. in town. Um, we're always talking about them. So they want to refurbish or electrify a cargo bike and then make it a zine library and take it all around town to different events and be able to just like, you know, bring the knowledge everywhere, which is really adorable. Spread the zine love. Yes. I love that. And now we have Radical Cat. So dope. We're actually... So we have to bring one of them on. Maybe Sue or somebody. Yes. Um, yeah, it's mobile, it's shareable, it's grounded in the community, it's art. They really did a great little job, and you can click over here and get their PowerPoint will come up in theory. We have to interview these other two people. Yeah, we will. Terms of Radical Riders and New Life. Yes. So, yeah, so those are the options for the first ever Maker Artist Grant. Yes. Where they'll get two thousand dollars, and your vote really counts. So please go onto our website, mm-hmm. just go to the top, click on Maker Artist Grant, scroll down, and vote for your favorite. Okay, it's like a community chosen. Grant. We're counting on you. I think the last time I checked, it's seventy votes come through. Yeah, so, so your vote matters. People are doing it. It's yeah. going to be close. Like it's going to be it, a couple of votes. Yeah. Whoever wins could win by like one or two votes. So for you real. could really for real. We, Tip the scales. We let people vote at Art on Tap last Thursday, and the two top ones, I don't want to give it away, um, were really, really close. And so we're going to factor in those votes, the staff and the board's going to vote, and then your community votes online, and then whoever wins, wins, you know? So get on there and let Well, they're us all know. awesome projects. They're, so they're there's really, no bad choice. Seriously, they are all awesome. I, I love the diversity and... The fact that like we're gonna just empower like a, a little community and they're gonna come into the generator for six months too, which is gonna be so dope. We're gonna like have mm-hmm. them in here with us working. So I think that's another for me that's another factor. So so the design build collective's already here and Seraphim's already here in the space working. So the two ones that don't have a space and aren't here <laughs> now yet, you could- well, our new life a, and yeah, the radical writers. I mean, I'm just saying that's it's just a true. little bit of a factor for me because I'm true. like, I do want to bring in those two other groups that aren't here already. Yeah. So I I'm don't not know. trying to sway it though. I'm not trying to sway. It. I'm just saying. Definitely, just, just see who out. resonates with you. Yeah, absolutely. They're all amazing. They're all it's amazing. It's a really tough choice. It is. I really wish we could find all of them. So maybe you, next year. Yeah, maybe next year. I mean, maybe there's like an angel donor out there that wants to just like hey, yeah, if you're watching. fly in and be like, I'll fund all of these grants. Yeah. Um, we would love that. So a couple other things I want to talk about before we go into Instagram Roundup is like we said, we're doing neutral ground every last Sunday and then we're doing art on tap every third Thursday. Those are like our two monthly community social events. Um, and I'm looking for music for all of it. So if you are a punk band and you want to play neutral ground or thrash or metal, you know, in that genre, hit us up. And then if you are, we'll kind of go towards more singer songwriter for art on tap. Um, but I'm just like booking out months and months in advance um, and just hit us up because it's really like if you're just down to do it, we're and participate. Yeah, we want you here. So let us know. They're really fun events. They are really. All right, Instagram Quickie roundup. Instagram roundup. Super fast. Cockpit Comics is doing their own art show. Nice. Yeah. On June 9th. June 9th. So from 8 to 10. Go over there. I love Cockpit Comics. Yeah, it's a really cute spot. Uh, side note, they're also doing um, a fundraiser right now to open up a second location. Oh. You can cute. See. Let's see if it'll... 
where can you get to it? Yeah, use the link in bio. I got link in bio. Yep, they're at six k out of twenty k. Nice. Twenty one days left. And Killing I, it. I, I love them. Totally hit that. Yeah, be sure to go support them. Yeah, they're sweet. Yeah. Um, dude, this blew my mind. The Cypress is doing a skate party. Um, with the werewolf club and Brad all over the place with the gloves. Yeah, I kind of like it. They're yeah. doing a lot, lots of weird stuff. So it's going to be like a shred thing for a, a magazine. I shred didn't, 30. I didn't even know about this magazine. So I got to hit these people up. Who are you? You want to come to Mutual Ground? Uh, so that looks super dope. Seven point Duo nine. team game of skate. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And it's a Sunday too. So, and at noon. Similar vibes. Five dollar buy-in. Yeah. Winner takes all, baby. Go get in it. Get I hope it. Ascension knows. Collective breath with Ruka. Yeah. Ruka's doing this weekly wellness writing workshop, and I keep like wanting to highlight it. It's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Is it a poetry thing? Yeah. It's with the uh, Sideways 8 Projects. Oh, yeah. I, was, you, I remember we talked about this before, and I was like, mm, I want to go. I know. We should go next, next week. And Tuesday. you can um, zoom Eight in too, which is nice. nice. Radical Adventure Riders, we just were talking about them. Pancake feed. Free pancakes and coffee for everybody that rides a bike it's on a win Friday. Win. Yeah. It's a win-win, pancakes and ride your bike. It's that sounds so nice if I didn't live out in the lemon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but just bike the 14 miles <laughs> yeah. on 395. Dear Lord, please stop. Um, but they're just doing so much good. See, they had a yeah, cookie ride. They do this coffee thing outside on Fridays. Family rides. They're they're just doing it all. They're yeah. really great. Highly recommend them. Super active. Yeah, very active. Um, is that all I have up here? Yep. That's it. There's so many other things, but you know what? We're Thanks for tuning time. in. Yeah. Happy Wednesday. Night. See you on Sunday. Yes, see you Sunday. Bye.